Well, dear Vice President of the European Parliament, um, honorable members of the Parliament, ambassadors, um, ladies and gentlemen, I am really grateful for being here today. I would like to congratulate from the depth of my heart Ms. Gabriel for having taken this initiative. She's been from the very beginning one of the main proponents of our policy, both in migration and security. And uh, I'm grateful uh, to her and to her contribution uh, that has already started giving uh, very concrete uh, results. Well, the focus uh, on our external borders could not be more topical, as you all know. Since this commission took office two and a half years ago, we have had to deal uh, with two parallel crises, the migratory crisis and the security crisis. For both of these crises, our external borders have been the connecting thread, a flashpoint of uh, extreme pressures, challenges, and fundamental questions about the way we move forward as a union. Whether we stick together as one indivisible union in va of values, or whether we dissipate into separate, uncoordinated, fragmented, and probably failing parts. Uh, when uh, I started uh, my term as a commissioner, both uh, responsible for security and migration, I never expected that we would be confronted with two simultaneous crises on this portfolio. Crises that go beyond the European borders and that they have become global. Two crises which, uh, much more than the financial crisis that was facing our union at the time, would come to threaten the very existence of our union itself. It is a fact that none of us was prepared. Neither we, nor our member states. But um, with crisis and uh, successive tragedies knocking on our door, even with some delay, we are today at a much better point to cope effectively with these challenges. What we came to understand was that a union founded on the principles of responsibility and solidarity of openness and tolerance cannot survive on these values alone. Tolerance cannot come at the expense of our security. The inverse is also true. Security will never come at the expense of our values. The first thing we focused on, therefore, was how to better defend our external borders. Believe me, in record time, because we know what are the procedures within the institutional complex of the European Union, in a very short period. Also, with the critical contribution of the European Parliament, we managed to put in place, as Maria said before, the European Borders and Coast Guard. This was one of the central pillars of our comprehensive European agenda on migration, and it became already a symbol of union that delivers. The agency, and I'm sure Mr. Lejeri and some minutes from now will give you more details on that, is rapidly becoming fully operational now. It is ready to step in immediately to support our member states in managing their external borders. There is still work to be done by our member states, and we are 
pushing continuously to ensure the full operational capability of the rapid reaction pool. The European Borders and Coast Guard will also be helpful in the area of return. Returning third country nationals who do not have the right to stay is a critical element of managing migration. The frontline member states continue to need our support and our assistance. There are ongoing important operations in Bulgaria, in Italy, and in Greece. In parallel, cooperation with our neighbors is key at political, but also at operational level. And here, once again, I would like to repeat that behind what was said and written in the newspapers recently, the EU-Turkey statement works. And we have to do our best in order to keep this statement alive. It has already produced very positive, tangible results. I remind you that last year, during this period, we had more than 12,000 people crossing the Aegean Sea to come over to the European uh, uh, shores. Now, the numbers have subsided dramatically. The average is between 40 to 50 persons per day. And the member states, the front line of states, have done a good job. We are not where we were two years ago. The hotspots hot work perfectly, I would say. Since 100% of the ones who even now cross our sea borders are registered, identified, and fingerprinted. It was not the case two years ago. And this cooperation between border guards is bringing results that we should commend. And as we saw in uh, recent terrorist attacks in Berlin and elsewhere, potentially also an important piece of the security Puzzle. This is where the interaction between our policy on migration and security starts at our external borders. This is first and foremost about information. We need to know who crosses our external borders. We need to know who they are. And we need to check them against all our security databases to make sure law enforcement authorities can operationally follow up on suspects. That is why we introduced systematic checks of all persons crossing the EU external borders against security database. Because we had the Brussels and Paris, and Paris attacks with EU citizens that went to Syria and managed to return to Europe undetected, abusing our openness to commit their heinous crimes against the societies that raised them. Since last Friday, this crucial security layer is a reality at all our external border crossing points. You might know, or you read in the newspapers, that we experienced in the beginning of the implementation of this new measure some difficulties. But a meeting is being organized tomorrow here in Brussels with member states experts to help them implement the legislation and ensure regular traffic flow without compromising the level of security. The security of travel documents is also crucial here for establishing the identity of a person. In December 2016, we adopted an action plan on document security to make residence cards, identity documents, and emergency travel documents more secure. 
Beyond the threat coming from homegrown terrorists, there are, of course, information gaps also about third country nationals. That is why we proposed an EU entry exit system to record the border crossings of non EU citizens and to reinforce border check procedures for non EU nationals traveling to the European Union. The entry exit system is a key proposal to improve security in the Schengen area. And uh, I call on you, especially members of the Parliament, to help the interinstitutional discussions to move forward towards adoption. The other piece, and very important piece, of the puzzle is ETS. You know what ETS is, something similar to the American ESTA. There are some differences, but uh, the European model, believe me, will be even more advanced and more progressive and more efficient. This is the system we propose to get uh, advanced information related to security and migration risks on visa-free third national nationals before they arrive at our external borders. Its swift adoption is therefore essential in order to ensure the security of our citizens and the proper management of our borders. I hope it can be operational by 2020 and uh, the European Parliament um, in the, is in the driver's seat, I would say, to make it yes, along with entry exit a reality in Europe. Now, in recent months, with the security and migration crisis happening simultaneously, our Schengen area has come under a lot of strain. It has even it has been even called into question by some that ask if it will survive the crisis. I remind you that uh, Schengen is one of the greatest and more tangible achievements of European integration. Nobody in this room, and no one among the European citizens would never imagine a Europe without uh, uh, free movement being ensured. For us, the generation that has lived Europe with borders is uh, a very bad memory, I can tell you. So we must do our best in order to uphold and defend this achievement. Some member states have temporarily reintroduced internal border controls to meet the influx of irregular migration and the increased terrorist threat. These decisions are in line with the Schengen Borders Code. That much is clear. But we are, of course, not happy that we are in this situation and we want to return back to Schengen as soon as possible. Our member states are in the best position to assess the threats. There is a clear need to ensure the right proportionate response. Other measures, such as intensified police checks, can certainly help to achieve the same results and keep our continent our European Union open. As we know it and as our citizens want it to be. Dear friends, our external borders have come, yes, it is true, have come under extreme pressures in the past two years. Pressures which have come to call the very existence of our union into question. But here too, there is strength to be found in unity, in trusting each other and working together. 
in remaining, remaining faithful to the values of the Union, while doing our best that our external border keeps Europe safe without making it a fortress. By strengthening our external borders, we also strengthen our management of migration. Stepping up the information our external borders produce and sharing that information between us will allow us to fight terrorism in a more effective way. We will soon come forward with new initiatives also in this area, which will bring together our actions on external borders with our actions in the area on migration and security. Because the objective remains the same, a tolerant, open, and welcoming union, which ensures the security of its citizens, which remains faithful to its moral, legal, and political values. We are all committed to that. And once again, given this opportunity today, Maria, to express my gratitude for the support of uh, the European Parliament to our efforts. As I said in the beginning, we are not where we were two years ago. We have made progress on all these issues, but more has to be done in the future. And here, once again, I would like to make a strong call to all member states and to all governments to support and help us with that. But on the other hand, to fulfill their commitments and their pledges, because there are still some shortcomings there. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish to this conference a great success, and I look forward to reading the results of this excellent initiative you have taken, Maria. Thank you. Thank you very much.